Whatever questions you have, let me know. But we are talking about menopause, um, weight loss myths, um, some things that people think that they have to do. This, sorry, there's a hair that's driving me crazy. There it is, got it. <laughs> um, what do, what do you need to do to lose weight in menopause, right? And, and women, I see women just doing everything and it's sometimes the exact opposite of what we need to be doing to lose weight in menopause. So who am I? Why are you listening to me? My name is Kathy Cote. I am 55 years old. I am not in menopause yet, still, still cycling, but going through perimenopause and heading into menopause. So. I um, went through my own struggles when I was 48, 49, and found myself 20, 25 pounds overweight, but I was having a hell of a time trying to get that off. And so, um, you know, it was definitely hormonal issues. Um, with perimenopause, I went through a lot. I lost my hair, um, libido was in the tank. Um, you know, there was just a lot of issues, super tired all the time. I had no energy and I couldn't lose the weight to save my life. I would lose the weight, but then I would gain it back. So I would lose it and then gain it. And so, um, if this sounds familiar to you at all, then hit up a like and let me know that, you know, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, if you're not in, in, if you're not a female in your forties, you know, late 40s, early 50s, 60s, then you might want to just keep on scrolling, right? So, um, so, so what I did was I ended up finally hiring a coach. Now, my backstory is I was, a, I am, was a, so I'm a certified personal trainer. I'm also a certified nutrition coach, and I also have a specialization in nutrition and hormones and metabolism. So, um, Wagovi is the only thing that has helped. I don't know what Wagovi is. Hey Google, what's Wagovi? On the website cyberdefinitions.com, they say, what is going on? Um, I guess I don't know what, I don't know what Wagovi is. is so, <laughs> um, GLP wide. Okay. So this is like Manjaro. Um, my apologies. I don't Hey Google, stop. So, um, you know, for a certain population of people that are obese or have type two diabetes or have um, like an, a food addiction, then that might be something that is viable, right? Here's the thing, what is the exit plan, right? Is that something that you want to do? <laughs> That's funny. You know, is that something that you want to do for the rest of your life to 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 lose weight or maintain it? Because that is what is you're going to have to do to maintain that. Thank you, thank you very much for the rose. Um, so you know, just think about your your exit plan. Like how how are you going to how are you going to maintain weight loss as far as that goes? I don't know your situation at all. So um, you know, so. So that it works, right? Um, so, but you're saying is it has worked, right? So maybe it's a work in progress. Um, yeah. And so as somebody who just needs five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds to lose, I definitely wouldn't say that that is a viable option for most people. Um, and, you know, it, it's just not going to be sustainable for somebody who doesn't have a significant amount of weight to lose. Even if you had a significant amount, like 50 pounds, I'm not sure that this would be the route that I would take. Um, so I've helped, I've helped over, I've helped over 250 women lose weight. I've, lo I've helped another 700 women lose weight with my six week program, right? So the, I'm not here to sell my six week program. It's already closed. It is, it is not going on anymore. So, um, it's about lifestyle changes. And if you, if that is something that's helping you make a lifestyle change, then I'm, I'm for that. I'm all for that. However, it's not going to be so a small a population is going to need something like that, right? Where it's going to be useful. However, you know, this is not something that's going to be sustainable for most people. So, 
So awesome. Again, I'm not here to talk about Manjaro. I'm here to talk about weight loss myths, right? And what you can do to lose weight that's going to be sustainable that's not going to involve injecting yourself that's not going to involve unpleasant side effects and that's not going to involve you having to be on it for the rest of your life so if you are looking to lose five pounds ten pounds twenty pounds you know 30 pounds even more then there is a more sustainable approach and that is going to be through lifestyle diet and nutrition and controlling your stress and so as women in our late 40s, early 50s, we have a ton of stress, right? We're dealing with parents that are aging. We're dealing with kids that maybe still are in the house. Um, you know, we're, we're excelling in our careers a lot of, a lot of times. Um, we're taking care of everything. So there's just a lot going on. And, you know, that is going to have a huge factor on your metabolism and also your hormones. And so, most like, mostly we're talking about cortisol in this respect, right? So you're jacking up your cortisol and that's gonna lead you to retaining belly fat. So if you found yourself in the position of where you just keep slowly lose, gaining weight, and especially in the middle, then that is most likely what is going on is that cortisol response to the stress and you have elevated cortisol levels. And so what happens is cortisol is the opposite of melatonin. So when we have elevated cortisol, that's gonna push down melatonin and that's going to interfere with your sleep. And so now we're disrupt, disrupting the sleep cycle as well. So now we, you know, you, if you constantly have that cortisol going, then melatonin can't come in to suppress that because melatonin rises later in the evening to help you go to sleep. And then cortisol comes in the morning to help you wake up. So, um, so T Rose 44. Yeah. So this might have something to do with that, you know, um, and it has a lot to do with it actually, you know, is that stress. And so, um, I don't, um, hold on. Let me just take care of something one moment. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, and it is going to be all over but we see it predominantly in the belly because that's where the cortisol receptors are and so yes it is all over but um you know this just starts to get larger and what happens is you are storing body fat you're storing belly fat but you're also storing fat because it is trying to protect itself so what happens is like when you go on an aggressive diet or if you go on you know um I don't know if you guys remember in 2012 it was hcg right which was human growth hormone um that was the um i'm sorry there's a different one that was that's human growth hormone that's hgh um hcg diet where they were injecting that into their their bellies as um pregnancy hormones and that was to block the appetite so it's the same thing over and over you know this isn't without side effects Here's the thing though, you need, if you are going to do that approach, what is your exit plan, right? Any, you can lose weight, of course, by not eating and by having super, super low calories. I blocked her, so she's talking about those like Manjaro, so that's what she's talking about. If you want, if you're interested in that, girl, there is all kinds of pages about that. And I'm talking about realistic weight loss and how to actually lose weight and keep it off. And so with these aggressive diets, with these, any kind of like a fad diet, keto, you know, injections, um, whatever, yes, you're gonna lose weight, you know, go ahead, do Octavia and, and get their products and, and live on those for a while and see what happens to your body. Take the injection, see what happens to your body. It's not pretty, it's, it's not a good thing. Yes, you will lose weight. Here's the thing, you're not just going to lose body fat, you're going to lose muscle and um, body fat as well. So what happens now is we think that we want to lose weight, right? We want to lose weight. We wanna see the scale go down. But instead of thinking about how much weight can you lose, think about it in terms of how much fat can you take off of your body while still preserving your muscle? Because if you take off fat and muscle off of your body, 
it's not a pretty result. That's how we're gonna see wrinkles, excess fat, excess skin, um, cellulite. It's not a great look, all right? If you can maintain your muscle mass while you're losing fat, yes, it's a slower process. Yes, it's going to take longer, but guess what? That is sustainable. It's actually way more enjoyable if you incorporate a flexible dieting lifestyle instead of, instead of giving yourself something that is going to decrease your appetite so low that you forget to eat, that it is, think about the implications of that. So here's what, if you go to my calorie calculator on, online, that's gonna show you what your maintenance calories are, what your body needs to keep it alive, right? That is gonna be a far cry from 500 calories, 800 calories, 1200 calories. Your body needs that nutrition. So when you do something like that, you have to think about what's going to happen to your health when it's not getting the vitamins and the nutrients that it needs, right? Imagine you're not getting protein, you're not gonna be able to maintain or grow muscle. Um, you're not getting enough fat in your diet, so your digestion is not going to be good. You're not getting enough carbs in your diet or fiber. So again, that's gonna mess with your digestion, but also with um, your energy levels. And so, you know, that's why they say on um, like Octavia in these very low calorie diets not to exercise because you don't have the energy available to expend. So if any of this is making sense, hit the likes. If you're like, I don't get it, then just say, I don't get it. <laughs> right? um, you know, I know it's confusing and I know that we are, at times we get desperate to take this weight off and that's what leads us to chasing these shiny objects. Oh my God, Becky Din Manjaro, look at her. Look at, look at the fabulous results that she's getting. You know what, we don't hear what Becky's going through. We don't hear um, that she's nauseous all the time, that she's throwing up, that she's maybe constipated, hasn't gone to the bathroom for five days. You know, we don't hear about that stuff. Um, we just hear about, oh my God, I lost 15 pounds in three weeks. Like, it's, it's just not, it's not good for you to lose weight that quickly. That is not going to be just fat. It is, it is just not. Um, have worked with a nutritionist and lost weight, but no one ever teaches reverse dieting. So, you know, go. Hey girl. How are you? What are you doing up? Wait, what time is it? Eight, nine, ten, 12, one. Eight, wait, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. Okay, it's one. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it, it's true. Nobody does talk about that exit plan as far as a reverse diet goes. And they talk, they like say in Octavia that you should bring your calories up slowly, but you're like, no, you hit your goal, right? No, I lost my 35 pounds, I lost my 40 pounds, 115, that's what I thought. <laughs> no, I lost that 115, um, I lost that 35 pounds or 45 pounds, whatever it was, and then you're like, yay, goal, right? It's the Oprah effect, right? And then you go back to doing what you were doing and the weight comes back on. And so again, like I was saying, the weight that you lost was muscle and fat, not just fat, but when you gain the weight back, it's gonna come all back on as fat. And so you do that a couple times and you're just gonna end up with more fat on your body and it's going to look completely different from when you did that you know, two cycles ago or five cycles ago. So when you look at yourself, like when you see a picture of yourself when you were 35 and you're like, damn, I looked so good there. Why did I think I was so fat? You know, and then you look at yourself now and you're like, God damn, like what happened? You know, and that's what happens is you're altering your body shape. You're altering your body composition when you do these extreme diets. So I'm not hating on Munjaro, right? This is a is a fabulous drug for people that are obese, have type two diabetes. It's also showing promising results for people that are addicted to alcohol. So there are some there are some great things to come from this drug. This drug is not intended as a weight loss drug. They say that it is not a weight loss drug, but. We, ha we hop on the newest fad and now there's Munjaro parties going on. And there's people on the interwebs and on TikTok telling you how to score it, how to get it cheap, how to talk to your doctor to get it, what to say. Like, it's kind of crazy. It is, it's nuts. It, it really is nuts. Um, and I feel bad because those results just those results just aren't going to be lasting. You know, it's, it's just not, 
Um, the reason why, like, and for people that are addicted to food, there is also some counseling that has to happen in place. Otherwise, when you lose that weight, it's just going to come right back on. Same with bariatric surgery. If you're not addressing the reason why you are a binge eater, then it's just going to come back. That surgery or that drug isn't going to fix that. All right, I am 37% body fat. Seems nothing I do gets rid of it. I'm postmenopausal and can't do lots of cardio. Okay, so first thing that you would do is, um, is I would, I would ask like, how many calories are you eating? What is your maintenance, right? So go to my calorie calculator, calculate what your maintenance calories are, and then see if you're, eat, if you're eating less than 500 calories below that maintenance, then you probably do need a reverse diet to get your, um, your metabolism back up to where it's gonna be in a place where you're gonna be able to lose fat. You don't need to do cardio to lose weight. I do not do cardio and I, you know, I, I don't do cardio at all. I used to be a marathon trainer. I used to, was a spin instructor. I taught two classes um, a day sometimes. You know, I really ran my body into the ground and it took me coming out of that cardio cycle and going all in onto the weight training. I'll get to that one second, PM, PMF day. <laughs> um, to, to realize, to give my body a break, because earlier I was talking about the cortisol, and so that's not going to help you lose fat, right? It's just going to increase your body's need for calories. So this is why I don't, for all of my ladies who are in, um, that who come to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching or who are in my programs, I'm like, let's decrease some of that cardio because otherwise we're just going to have a huge calorie need. And so, you know, when I calculate all of your activity that you're doing, now it's jacking your calories up to 2,500 calories. And you're like, good God, I can't eat that much. I'm like, then stop doing all this cardio and then you won't have to eat that much, all right? So um, you'll see, like, if you go to my calorie calculator, it's going to influence the more activity that you do the more calories you're gonna get here's the thing you can't burn off those calories so you really want to it's calories in that are going to have the biggest effect on your body composition now do you need to weigh your food yes you do need to know how much you're eating you have to know how much a portion is we as humans we're kind of shitty at like estimating and we tend to overestimate the amount of activity that we're doing and we definitely underestimate the, what the amount of food that we are actually eating so here's like say like um a can of nuts now <laughs> like in our household we go through these we go through one of these um like every like week and a half here's the thing there's um 13 servings in here and that's 170 calories a serving so um uh, it's like me and my husband and a serving is, it says 28 grams or about three tablespoons. But li literally, if I'm gonna eat, like if I'm mindlessly eating, then I'm just gonna pop like two handfuls. Did I say two tablespoons? Three tablespoons. I'm gonna pop like three handfuls in. And now I have no idea really how much I ate. But this is a high calorie food, right? This is not protein, guys. It has some protein, but it's a fat source. So that's 170 calories. So I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah. I had a serving, but if you had two, now you just overate by 170 calories. So there's gonna be certain foods that you want to weigh. I do not weigh my lettuce. I eyeball my berries and you know things that are that are low calorie. You don't have to weigh that. But if you're tracking like protein, which I highly recommend that you hit your hit your daily protein goal. Um, you're gonna want to track that so that you know that you actually are hitting that protein goal. Again, we're, we're gonna, you know, it's such a weird like dynamic when we're like, oh yeah, oh I eat, I eat tons of chicken and stuff like that. And then, and then I ask you, you know, I'll ask like, okay, well if you were gonna make a sandwich, like how many pieces of deli meat would you put on there? And like a lot of women say two, you know, and like, and like deli meat, there's, that's not a lot. That's usually like two grams of, like two ounces of, like deli meat, that's only like, it's like 12 grams of protein right there. So if you're trying to get in 150 grams of protein, you definitely want to make sure that you are hitting those numbers. And I think you'll be surprised, like what does a six ounce 
chicken breasts look like. So, you know, get familiar with that. Weighing is not forever. It's just a tool to use so that you can start to recognize what does a portion look like? Me, I love popcorn, right? I get it. I buy it in the big bags from the from the grocery store, right? With the with the olive oil. I love popcorn. Um, but uh, in, and that's not a super high calorie food. But you know, you can eat a good amount of it. And um, I will answer that in one second. C R Z Y H. Um, but. You know, left to my own devices, I'm just if I'm just sitting there in front of the TV, then I'm probably gonna have a couple servings of that. So those little things add up, you know. So we tend to underestimate the things that you know we it's like the ignorance is bliss, and then we kind of overestimate that, like, oh yeah, I definitely had six ounces of chicken. When if you look, like six ounces of chicken, so um, so she was asking, weigh it before cooked or after. So there's two different things. So I do have a food scale. I don't want to. Uh, weigh raw my raw food right I just want to take the food and put it in the pan right? and what I do a lot is I take um, chicken and I put it in an instapot or like a pressure cooker if you don't know what that is literally you can put it in there for 12 minutes and it's done and then I have I can either shred it or I have cooked chicken and so now say it was eight ounces an eight ounce chicken breast that's going to cook down to six ounces so just as a rule of thumb protein is going to cook down about 25 percent and this is pretty much across the board right this will be for steak this will be for salmon scallops um shrimp um hamburgers and you know any of that um pork chops you know what, whatever you have ground any of the ground meats if you start off with a pound of ground beef then that is going to probably ay 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 25% 16 ounces is going to cook down to 12 ounces all right so hopefully that answers that question um so i will log it cooked i will weigh it cooked but here now stick with me here and if you go to my um facebook group I put this calculation in there all the time. Also on my Instagram, I haven't done it in a little bit. I'll probably pop that in there this week. Um, it, it would be a good time to do that. Last week I was talking about logging alcohol. So to log it, so now that eight ounce chicken breast cooked down to six ounces, but you're still getting all the protein and most of the calories from that. So some of that fat's gonna cook off, right? I do lean, um, boneless lean chicken mostly. Um, so some of that is going to cook off, but you want to log it as, like if you're eating that whole six ounce piece that used to be eight ounces, you want to log it as eight ounces of raw, or you could log it as six ounces of cooked. I would just prefer to log, I like log all of mine as, Purdue boneless, skinless chicken. So that, I hope that answers that question. So <laughs> I always make um, Google do the work because like I'll like take a random piece of, um, you know, like you're never gonna get a perfect like six ounce piece and six ounces is a lot of chicken, right? So um, a lot of times if I take a piece out, it'll be like 3.7 ounces. And so, hey, Amy, how are you? Um, so if it's a 3.7 ounce piece of chicken that's cooked, then I'm gonna say, hey Google, What's 3.7 times 1.25? Sorry, what are you asking? Hey Google, what's 3.7 times 1.25? 3 3.7 times 1.25 is 4.625. So then you're gonna log it as 4.625. You're not gonna find 4.625. You're either gonna log it as four and a half or four, like it'll come close, but it won't be 4.625. I don't sweat the small stuff, you know? You just wanna get close. Sorry for all of you guys that had <laughs> had your Googles go crazy. So, um, so um, that's, you know, definitely a strategy. I do, so, so I weigh most of my stuff, but like um, peanut butter, I definitely wanna weigh peanut butter. Um, and I also like wanna just make sure, so I eat Greek yogurt a lot. I, I know that three scoops, like three big spoonfuls is going to be about 170 grams, but I'm just so used to it that I just put it on the scale and then I just weigh it out to, till I get to 170 grams. So, um, so protein is going to be your friend when you are going through menopause. You definitely wanna make sure that you're getting in one gram of pound per body weight. Now, 
If you are 170 pounds or more, you do not have to eat your weight in um, grams of protein per pound, all right? So I don't really want anybody going over 170 grams of protein. I personally, I'm 130 pounds. I am eating around 160 grams of protein, but I have goals, right? I have, um, I, it closed out at 5 p.m. tonight, sorry, Amy. Um, the next one is is going to be open i don't know march or april i got to take a look at the timing so um if i mean if you are desperate to get in there i could probably squeeze you in um just like all the emails went out it went out 28 minutes ago so that's actually not a big deal i can squeeze you in there if you want to get in um just go to the link in my bio and if you can't get in then just if you go to the link in my bio, then you're gonna be able to send me an email and I will take care of it and see if we can make it happen if that's something that you wanna do. Anyways, um, so protein is going to be your friend, especially when you're in menopause. If you follow my fitness pal, the recommendations are going to be too low. So it's going to be 20% protein, which is too low, and it's gonna recommend 50% fat, high, I mean carbs, which is too high, Fat is actually is, is good. It's gonna recommend 30% fat, which is perfect when you're in menopause, maybe even just a little bit more. Kind of depends on like what are your symptoms, you know, that you're having. If you're having adverse symptoms in menopause, then we might we might move that um, the fat source into up a little bit. But here's the thing: what we want is we want to have balanced macros, right? So not the low carb and high pro not the low protein and high carb, we want it balanced across the board. So this isn't a high protein diet. Yeah, it's gonna be more protein than you're used to eating just because you're not used to eating that much. Um, when you eat higher protein, you will not be hungry. I promise you that, right? So that is one caveat of making sure that you are getting in plenty of protein is you're just going to be full. Here's another bonus of protein is you are going to burn calories digesting protein. So in the digestion process of breaking down protein, this doesn't count for shakes. So if you have three premier protein shakes, you're not going to get this benefit, all right? Breaking down the protein is going to burn calories. That's not why we do it, but it is definitely a benefit. And you're going to see that your body is going to change. So within three weeks, so the ladies that are starting my jumpstart, like this six week program, in three weeks, they're gonna be like, wait a minute, is it possible? Is it possible that, that I'm tightening up? Because I feel like I'm tightening up. Um, let me just get a little tissue, my eyes are, I think I got makeup in the corner of my, my eye, so it's running. Um, yes, <laughs> it is possible, you know? So what happens is that protein, right? It's a, it's a good amount of protein. Um, MM straight, strat, stratum maybe? Um, I hope to do the next one. I had to have another toe surgery and in a boot until at least end of January. Ah, that's... I, I have a I have a uh, client who's in a boot too, and so she pushed it. She got out of the boot and she pushed it, and now she's back in it. So take care of yourself, right? Uh, but a caveat too is protein is going to help is going to help um, speed up that healing process. So you can still follow that, uh, you know, push up your protein. So what is a good simple breakfast with protein? I have to be at work at 6 a.m. I got you, girl. Um, I just do a bowl of yogurt with, um, I do non-fat Greek yogurt with a scoop of protein powder. It's 42 grams of protein right there. Boom, done, easy, right? If you want, you can make a shake with it. If you put milk in it or whatever it is that you like, um, you know, uh, and make a smoothie, you can do that the night before so that you're out the door. You can mix berries in it, mix a banana. Just be careful like with bananas and stuff because that's really gonna be putting in, you know, adding extra calories, which is not necessarily a bad thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. I know like some people, are, they put like the whole kitchen sink in their smoothie and it's like 800 calories. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> you know? Um, but so that's an easy breakfast. Also, if you go to, so I'm taking it down pretty soon because I want it available just for my Facebook group. But if you go to the link in my bio right now, the Lazy Girl Cooking Guide is there. 
ladies, how I didn't mention this before, I don't know. The Lazy Girl Cooking Guide, right? I just came, I just just released this at the beginning of December. Um, I don't have a ton of time to cook. And for the most part, my husband's a chef, right? But he's chefing in the restaurant, you know? So mostly I'm left at my own devices. Um, I'm kind of a quasi empty nester. My, my daughter's here, but she's not always around for meals. So I'm cooking for myself. Um, and I'm busy, right? I, I'm on the phone, I'm doing calls, I'm doing TikToks, you know, I'm doing my thing, and I just don't have a, a ton of time to cook. And I don't wanna make three different meals. Well, I, we don't here, so everybody, we all eat the same thing. Everybody likes the stuff that I make. So um, these are meals that are super easy to put together. Yes, you're gonna have to do a little bit of meal prep. Let me tell you, you're gonna be shocked. Um, I'm gonna have to plug my phone in. I put the chicken in the Instapot, right? I usually use three pounds of chicken. I put it in with a can of whatever vegetables. Usually I do tomatoes or rattel. Put it in there with a third of a packet for seasoning and then um, cook it for 12 minutes and then that's done. And while I'm doing that, I boil eggs. Guess what? My meal prep is done for the day, for the week. And so now I will have, I can have that chicken that I can do um, other meals with. If I'm feeling like um, ambitious whatsoever, then I might do enchiladas, but a lot of times I just do an enchilada bowl. So I don't use, um, so for an enchilada bowl, I wouldn't use like the tortilla, but I would just take rice, I would use the chicken, then I would use enchilada sauce, and then you could put in your olives, um, peppers, like whatever you want, right? I, I like, I love a bowl. I'd love to just put it together and then just eat it all together. So if it's already cooked, then all you're doing is assembling, and that is what is the beauty of that. Um, I don't do a ton of salad dressing. I'm more doing gravies and sauces right now. Um, uh, for I do so I love buffalo chicken like I take a buffalo chicken wrap sa sandwich and then I'll put like ranch dressing but because it's in a roll-up you can only put so much ranch on there because otherwise it's gonna square out the sides um, but for me I personally don't do salad dressing I love just I love just plain olive oil and salt on my salad so my go-to salad is just lettuce tomato and cucumber and then um, if I have olives and I'll put olives on there and then whatever like kind of meat that I have so that's like my go-to salad. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty basic. Um, and you'll see that <laughs> from my, um, from the lazy girl cooking guide, but there is going to be, all those recipes are going to get you at least 30 grams of protein, if not 50 grams of protein. So for me, I personally, I want at least 50 grams of protein per meal, but I'm going to front load my, my meals. So I'm going to get like 60 grams, 65 grams of protein for breakfast. And then I'll probably get another like 50, 55 grams for lunch. Um, my tuna bacon melt has 52 grams of protein. So, and it's, it's four ingredients, you know, so it's not, you don't have to make it complicated. It takes, you know, two seconds to put together. Um, I cook the bacon in the microwave, right? I put it on, I put two slices in there for two minutes and then it's done, you know? Um, my my assistant, my VA, she was like, well, you know, you could just put it in a pan and then cook it in the oven, you know? And I'm like, who has time for that? <laughs> like, so, so you guys, right, I'm just showing you, I'm just showing you like a cheat code. Right? Um, you can do what you want, you know? Yes, it's probably better to, to, to cook the whole thing at once and then you can grab it as you need it. It. but um, you know I like to have my meals ready in five minutes right when I'm like you know what I'm ready I'm ready to eat then I want to eat so um, with a, just a little bit of pre-planning now what I do buy is the chopped peppers and onions already ahead of time so that if I'm gonna do a saute like the, it's already cut so I don't have to I don't have to cut anything it's, it's not that I'm lazy I'm not lazy it's called the lazy girl cooking guide I just don't have time right and and that's gonna be the barrier of entry to me to whether I'm gonna have vegetables or not is that I have to chop it right sadly enough that is the barrier of entry. So you can take away those barriers. I also do frozen vegetables a lot because they're already diced up into the perfect, you know, like bite size bites. So like broccoli, right? I freaking love broccoli, but I don't like taking the broccoli out of the thing, cutting it and then putting it in the microwave, right? I like to take it out of the bag, stick it in the thing and then put it in the, in the microwave for three minutes and have like the perfect pieces. So, um, so yes and no, um, my maintenance is 
is around 1900 calories for me to maintain 130 pounds. So I, um, I eat 1900 calories, but I track macros. So I want to, I just track my protein and then I look at total calories. So um, I'm not necessarily so strict with like, um, with my fats or my carbohydrates, because sometimes I'm gonna be over on fats, you know, especially if I decide I'm gonna have an extra handful of nuts, right? So that's gonna really put my fat grams up because, and I do that, I, I know it, but you know, it's just one of those things. You know, the nuts are like um, 15 grams of fat. So if I do have that extra handful of nuts, that's really gonna put me over on my fat that day. So um, it's not a big deal, guys, it really isn't. I, and I'm conscious of it. I know like, you know what, like tomorrow I'm probably not gonna have that extra handful of nuts or maybe I just won't have them at all. Um, but I will say Brazil nuts, if you are in menopause, if you have any thyroid issues or anything, these guys are amazing. So these are 25 calories a, 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 a piece and um, you just need two and this is gonna cover your selenium needs for the day take these at night and it's going to help you sleep so these are amazing they're they're pricey too i caught my husband eating like handfuls of them the other day and i told him how many calories it had and he was like oh <laughs> so i'm like hey you know lay off my nuts <laughs> but two of these guys i mean this bag was was ten dollars you know so and there's i don't know it says the serving size is eight pieces and there's nine there's nine servings, so what is that, 72? Yeah, so that's that's actually pretty good because that's 36 servings, so it's actually not, it's more than a month's worth unless your husband gets into them, so. Um, all right, what was I talking about? So yes, I, I do kind of count calories, but I'm more concerned with how much protein am I getting than like what's the makeup of. So that's the beauty of counting macros is Macros are just what are your calories made of? And I find most women are just leaning more towards carbs. My fitness pal is gonna set you up to do that, right? It's not gonna, it's only gonna recommend 20% protein and then 50% carbs. So we need, to, we need to shift that down and make it more even. So how do I know how to have a weightlifting routine? How do I know how to have a, how, you, how, how do you set up a weightlifting routine? Um, if you are brand new to lifting, then I would start with a three day a week full body program. I do have a YouTube video on YouTube that's gonna show you what that program looks like. However, if you are brand new to weightlifting, I highly, 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 highly recommend either hiring a trainer if you have it in your means or, hire, or going with a friend who knows what they're doing to show you the ropes and kind of get you familiar with the gym. So, you know, it's not something that you can just, you know, like just lay on somebody and just, hey, do this, you know, because most likely um, you're not gonna do the tempo right. You're not going to um, push the way you should, or maybe you're gonna do something wrong um, as far as form goes. So is it okay to drink premier protein? So I don't tell my clients that they can or can't have anything. However, I do say watch out for premier protein. Um, so let me get, I'll show you the protein powder that I have. So this is Quest protein powder. They are not paying me. If they did, I'd make a freaking fortune. It doesn't matter what kind of protein powder that you use, and you're probably using those ready-made drinks. Quest has ready-made drinks too. Here's the thing, the difference between Quest, Quest or any other protein powder and premier protein, right? Literally any other protein powder and premier protein is premier protein's ingredients are this long, right? Yes, some of it's in, um, vitamins, which doesn't fucking need to be in there because I can take my own vitamins on my own, thank you very much. But it also has um, gorgum, cellulose, and inulin, and a lot of people just can't process that, right? It's really hard on the belly. So if after 15 minutes your belly is fine, then it's fine, all right? But a lot of my clients can't do it. They're like, I'm so gassy. This I can't do this protein thing, right? It's really killing me. It's killing my guts. I'm not feeling good. And then I'm like, then we look. Let's let's do a my fitness pal audit, right? That's what we do. And then we look and we're like, well, here, this might be the problem, right? When you incorporate too many of the man-made um, proteins, 
It's not like, you know, you're having Quest chips in a Quest bar, right? Even if it's Quest, um, you know, you're putting all this crap in there because like it's convenient and you're hitting your protein goals, right? It's not, it's, it's not working, right? That's not, and, it, and you're going to <laughs> mess up your belly. So it's just the ingredients that are in there that don't need to be in there that is causing the um, digestive, you know, disruption. Um, here's the thing with Quest though, this is um, sweetened with sucralose. So not a lot of people, uh, or I should say, not everybody can tolerate sucralose. So mostly it's tolerable, but not everybody. So I love this one because A, it's delicious. Um, when I put this into non-fat Greek yogurt, that's 18 grams of protein. I add this, this is 26 grams of protein. Now we got 42 grams of protein, or 44 grams of protein in, in two, two things. I also mix with it, and I don't have any right now, like the little no sugar added fruit cups. And so I put pineapple in there and mix it up. Guys, that is like a parfait. It is delicious, and I'm still not tired of eating it. Um, so I have this, so I also have Chocolate Quest, which again, delicious. Um, so again, it's really personal preference. It doesn't, you know, I, it, I don't, I'm not promoting anything either way. Just saying like, if you're having premier protein, just see, like, <laughs> let's like assess after 15 minutes if you can tolerate that. A lot of people can, but a lot of people can't. So um, Quest is like a, just over a dollar a serving. So that is, is freaking reasonable in my eyes, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, but really it's like whatever, whatever you like, um, you know, a lot of the vegan proteins, they just don't taste good. You know, um, I don't really have, oopsie. Oof. All right. I don't have a favorite, um, Greek yogurt right now. Everything's so fucking expensive. I'm going to get whatever's on sale. Right. So I'm going to make sure it's non-fat Greek yogurt. I do like Oikos, um, but you know, it's, 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 it's going to be more expensive. Chobani t is good too. Actually, I like the Oikos better. So I guess maybe I do have a favorite, but I'm not going to buy it if it's cause like, ugh, cause I buy the big tub and that's like five ninety nine. you know, where I can get the store one on sale for four ninety nine. I'm going to save a buck. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, but if it's like four sixty nine and then the Oikos is four ninety nine, then I'll spend 30 cents to get that. So um, but it is definitely non-fat Greek yogurt. So you want to be careful because a full fat Greek yogurt is going to have 20 grams of fat. It's about 250 calories, which is fine if you're trying to raise your calories. So um, a lot of times people will have to have to start them off in a reverse diet and we're finding ways to get them more calories with less food. And so a great way to do that is to have a full fat Greek yogurt, is to have the nuts and the nut butters and like dried fruits. But then when we go into a, a fat loss phase, then we start to say like, hey, let's let's incorporate, you know, more berries and not any of those dried fruits. But if you're somebody who's really having problem getting in all the calories that you need to have, then you just have to make an adjustment to some of the foods that you have. So, you know, it doesn't, I know it seems kind of complicated, but um, as far as like a reverse diet, that is when you would bring your calories up because you've been on a diet for so long that you have to bring your calories up to maintenance because that calorie, that deficit doesn't work anymore. And so that's what's happening with a lot of you ladies, right? Is you're like, well, what the hell, right? I've been at these calories. I eat, this is, this is the perfect example, right? Is I get on a phone call, I have free consultations, I get on the phone and they're like, I eat healthy. And I'm like, oh shit, right? Because then I hear, all right, it's coffee for breakfast, maybe a little snack. And then we have um, a salad with chicken for lunch and then maybe a little snack and then protein, some kind of carbohydrate and then some kind of vegetable. Um, but, but then they're like, but I don't put any oil or anything on my, on my stuff. And I'm like, Oh God. Okay. I'm like, there's really not a lot of calories. And they go, but, but, but here's, here's my problem is then I have X, Y, Z, you know, enter favorite, um, junky, snacky, yummy food here. Right. And then they think that's the reason why, well, the reason why ladies, you have those cravings is because you haven't had enough food during the day. Right. So this intermittent fasting bullshit is, is setting you up to have those cravings. 
So do I have to count macros? I mean, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> um, so just think of macros. You don't have to count them, right? You just put them into MyFitnessPal and let MyFitnessPal do the work, right? You don't have to do anything. Just stick it in there and then see what happens. Knowledge is power, right? Once you start putting your foods into MyFitnessPal and then you start seeing, so as far as, so do you have an understanding of macros? And so there's 32 people here on here. I'm sure not everybody knows what macros is. So macros is what makes up your calories, right? So it's either gonna be protein, carbs, or fat. So a lot of foods like a ch like chicken, right, is going to be strictly protein. Now, um, chicken thighs is gonna be protein with fat on it. Nuts, predominantly fat with some protein. Carbs are gonna be, you know, sweet potatoes, potatoes, rice. Um, but when we look at, and people are like, well, I can't have carbs, right? You're thinking like pastries and, you know, the, the delicious things that are a combination of carbs and fat that makes them delicious so you know there's um but i went off track so <laughs> all macros is 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 what what is making up your calories is it protein carbs or fats and so you stick that stuff into my fitness pal and then it's going to break it down for you it's going to tell you hey guess what you only got 60 grams of protein today you got 160 grams of carbs and then you got 20 grams of fat. So now you know, right? Now you know. And it's going to give you a breakdown of what is that percentage. I recommend that it's balanced. So balanced looks like 33, 33, 33. It doesn't have to be exact, right? My, my macros are never exact. I don't care. I don't care that they're, I don't, that's not what I need. I need to make sure, and this is what I tell my clients, I need to make sure that I'm hitting my, cal my protein goal and then hitting total calories. So I can fill up, right, my carbs. I, I have popcorn, I have chocolate, I have wine. Not right now, it's dry January, I'm not having wine, so. Um, but normally, you know, I would, and that's gonna fill up some of my carbs. But then again, with the nuts, you know, that's gonna, I get, uh, I love cheese, I love bacon. So you have a certain allotment, it's like, it's like money, right, in the bank. You have your savings account, and so you have a certain amount of 20s, you have a certain amount of 10s, and you have a certain amount of 5s. And so you just spend those, and then, you know, when they're gone, they're gone. So that's kind of how I think of macros. So the first thing is to not to be concerned with what your macros are, right? And then just start logging them, and then you have some data. Right from there, then you have the data to see: Are you hitting your total calorie goals? Are you hitting your protein goals? How do you determine how many grams of protein you need in a day? I recommend one gram of protein per pound of body weight, unless you're over 170 pounds. Even if you are 170 pounds, I wouldn't recommend that you dive right into 170 grams of protein. Um, if you go to my calorie calculator here, it's going to calculate your macros. Right, it's going to calorie calculate your your maintenance calories which is very important to know right everybody always puts in what what are their weight loss calories you need to know what your maintenance calories are and then it's also going to tell you your protein so um if you are over 170 pounds then it's probably going to get you know it's going to go over um 170 so i don't recommend going 170 i personally am like between 160 and 170 a day so for me, I do front load my protein, so I'm gonna get anywhere from 60 to 65 grams of protein um, for my breakfast, but I also don't eat like that whole meal. So like my breakfast is 600 calories. Um, most of my meals are 600 calories, right? So my maintenance is right around 1900. If I have 2100 calories one day, it's not the end of the world, right? Um, that's the beauty of being in maintenance is, is a lot more forgiving. And so I'm maintaining my weight, but I want to build muscle, right? I want to keep putting muscle on my body. And so to do that, I need to make sure that I'm getting in my daily calories, but I also need to make sure that I'm getting in my protein as well, because the protein is what's going to help build that muscle. Um, hit me up with some likes, guys, if you're getting any kind of value from this conversation right now. Hit me up, come on. Um, so, 
The easiest way to determine is just one gram of protein per pound of body weight, no less than 0.8. So do the math on that. So if you're 150, if you're 150 pounds, then you should be shooting for 150 grams of protein. But if you're only eating 80 grams of protein, this is why I recommend, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Boom. You guys are delivering. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> you guys are killing it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, don't overwhelm yourself. Just fire up my fitness pal, start putting the stuff in and then look at it. And then that's going to give you some information, right? Because I can, holy crap, you guys are really delivering. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in one second, but you know, it didn't happen overnight either, you know, and so that's not something that you're, you're, you're not going to go from, from, you know, 20 to, to 60 in one day. So just the first thing is just, just be aware, right? And just, just to see where you are so that you know what to adjust. I will guarantee you with all the women that I've had go through my program, right? I should actually do the math, right? It's, it's over, it's like, like 500, right? <laughs> that I've had go through my program. And, and rarely, rarely, A, is anyone overeating, right? They're not like, oh my God, I just eat whatever. I don't know why I can't lose weight, right? That is, I've had two clients like that that are just like, I think I have a problem with food, right? Out of all of those women, it's, I eat healthy, um, I just don't, I'm just not hungry. I don't have hunger cues, right? That's not good. That's not good. So start out simple, right? And just start logging into my fitness pal. But most of my ladies who start with me, they're around 60 grams of protein per day. Some are less, you know, um, I had somebody message me and she was like, I can only get in 20 grams of protein per day. I'm like, what? Like what? <laughs> like seriously? <laughs> um, you know, like, come on, that's like three pieces of bacon. Like, um, honestly, well, no, it's not three pieces of bacon. It's like three eggs. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of consider like, what, what, what is the diet that you're doing? Are you not eating enough calories, right? Is your diet only eight, uh, 800 calories? And yeah, you're probably not eating enough protein. Here's the thing, 150 grams of protein is only 600 calories. So that's not even a third of my, of my diet, right? That's, if you think about it that way, because there's four calories in every gram of protein, so 150 grams of protein is 600 calories. That's that's not a lot, you know, but it definitely has a huge impact on your body composition and what are the changes that you're gonna to make to your body. And that is A, you're gonna be burning more calories with the process, hey there. Sassy stylist, what's going on? Um, you're definitely going to be burning more calories in the process, and you're also going to be, your, your muscles are going to take that, right? You can't store protein as body fat. Yes, you will. If you don't burn those excess carbs, that's gonna be stored as body fat. Same with fat. And so out of fat, the fat that you intake, you're going to burn about 5% of those calories through the digestion process. With carbohydrates, it's gonna be between five and 10% of the calories that you take in from carbohydrates are gonna be burned in the digestion process. Ready for this? Out of your protein, you're going to burn 30% of those calories in the digestion process. And there is the beauty right there. That is 80 to 100 calories right there. So <laughs> how do you feel about wellness doctor? Love it, love it. You know, I don't have anything bad to say about a wellness doctor. Um, all right, so we determined how to, det how to determine how many, okay, we talked about that. How in the world do you get that much protein for breakfast? All right, so I already told you that, right, that I get in around 60 to 65 grams of protein for breakfast, right? I showed you the yogurt that I have and then the protein powder that I put in. That's 44 grams of protein. Guess what? That's only 20 grams of protein left. And so what I do before I go to the gym, I have usually a banana and then I will have either a English muffin that has five grams of protein in it. I'll have an English muffin with some butter or with some jelly or I'll have a bagel 
a small bagel with um, some cream cheese. And so that's usually like right around 10, like five to 10 um, grams of protein right there. But then I also have some cottage cheese before I go to the gym. That's 13 grams of protein. Boom, you add that all up. 65 grams of protein almost. No, because I put one scoop, just one scoop of the unflavored um, gelatin um, collagen into my, um, into my water. And so that's how I get 65 grams of protein, right? It's not a ton of food. It's a good amount of food. It's pro you're probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't eat that all day, right? That's my, that's my pre-workout. So, so I'm not going to have the yogurt and the protein powder until after I get back home from the gym because I'm going to want to make sure that I load up on those carbs so that I can kick ass when I'm at the gym, right? That's the whole point. Oh my God, you guys are killing it with the likes. Thank you so much. Um, I have it like, and I can't see who's, who's sending the love. So, um, thank you. Cause I, Ooh, look at my little wing nut. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, so I have it moved over so that I can, the words are bigger, right? Cause age 55 now, you know? So, um, all right. So, so I'm going to load up on my carbs first. So fruit, um, oatmeal oh i do love like oatmeal with um, protein powder so you're gonna do like you want a kind of liquidy um and that's what i love i love this that salted caramel the quest salted caramel in the maple i get the um the lighter sugar one so it's only 110 calories and then i add that in so that's like 220 calories before um but i'll you know i don't there's just there's a lot right that you can do there's, there is just a lot that, that you can do. You can be creative. Um, I also like the, the, the apple, the cinnamon and the apple and I'll do, I love, I love apples. So I will take the time to, to chop up a little apple <laughs> and put that in there. Um, and so I can either do the salted caramel with that or I'll do, um, vanilla, but I also like, you know, um, chocolate you know, and that's just not the best in with the maple protein. So it really kind of depends on like what my vibe is, but I'm going to definitely have a huge carb source before I work out. Let's see. So if you're going to the gym at 5 a.m., is it benefit to drink a BCAA? Um, BCAAs are, they're, you, they're not necessary, right? Especially if you're incorporating real protein into your diet, you don't need branched chain amino acids. You're going to get those through it. So BCAAs, you're, you're going to get those through your diet. Um, you're kind of wasting your money um, on something like that, right? I'd rather see you like actually incorporate maybe collagen, um, the vital proteins, collagen, just one scoop. You don't need to go nuts with that stuff either. Um, so have a little food before you work out and then after. Yeah. So, so you're at, um, Ooh, Michelle, I'll get to yours, to yours in a second. Um, so for you, it's so early. I would do something that's going to really pack a punch, right? Really pack a carb punch. So, so maybe like a banana, but that might be too much. So in your case, I would do, and this, these, these I love, right? So dried apricots, these are like little, these are like little carb bombs, right? So these, um, I think it's about four apricots. That's like a hundred calories. Maybe it's five. Um, these are a, a great like carb source. So like, um, like bikers, like they would do something like a dry fruit. They do the gels, right? This is kind of the same thing. It's like a, it's like a quick hit of carbohydrates and you're going to burn that energy, but it's only going to take a little bit of room in your belly, right? So you're going to have like the apricots for a hundred calories are only going to be like a handful Whereas like a banana is going to be a little bit more in your belly before you go. And then, so I'm going to have all my carbs. I don't get, I also don't work out at 5 a.m. <laughs> I don't work out until nine. <laughs> but, um, so like my routine is I'm going to get up. I go for a walk. That's the first thing I do. I don't have coffee. I go, I go for a walk and then, um, kind of like plan how I want my day to go, right? Do I have calls going on? Like what's, what's going on? And so I just give myself like a little de decompress. There's always some birds out and stuff like that. And then I get home and then, um, <laughs> I, so I've been dealing with thyroid issues. Okay. What do we miss? My morning, we might've missed my morning routine, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to load up on my carbs before, before my, that's like my, my pre-breakfast. So I have two breakfasts, right? It's my pre-workout and it's my post-workout. 
I don't often um, do a pre-workout. Sometimes, you know, like on a on a Monday morning, if I had some cocktails the night before, then then I might do a pre-workout just to get my Sally ass in the gym, right? <laughs> but um, doing dry January, I have to say, I feel like amazing. You heard walking and then it cut off. Okay, so I'm trying to do something with my little wingy thing. Um, so I go for a walk and I say my affirmations and then I set up my day. What, what do I want my day to look like? What is the one thing that I need to accomplish? If I accomplish that one thing, then I know that I'm a winner, right? And so that's it. I don't listen to music. I see there's birds. It's beautiful around here. Perfect, right? If it's raining, I go. If it's snowing, I go. I, I have all the equipment. My, my $30 Columbia rain jacket is the best thing I've ever bought like best thing hands down I've ever bought. So, um, and then I come home and I have a cup of coffee and I have these Luminette glasses that I just bought um, to kind of, to give me that light because I live on Cape Cod, Massachusetts and it is um, very gloomy and I'm in the Northeast. <clears throat> so I'm not getting all the light that I need. So I just bought those and that, those are making a huge difference now. Those weren't cheap, right? Freaking $200, that was not cheap. I don't say, and I'm not recommending it. I am having thyroid issues brought on by myself because of all the freaking stress and all the crap that of Christmas and selling my house and downsizing into this temporary living space and my cat died, right? There's, everybody has shit going on, right? But I didn't, I didn't deal with it the way I should have. And so stress and now thyroid issues, so. I'm taking care of that, right? Hence dry January, hence meditation, hence the glasses, and it's really paying off, right? Even just in two weeks. So I'm starting to feel like more like myself again, like my sassy ass self. Um, and so coffee, well, water first <laughs> with, a, with one scoop of collagen. And I do the, um, it's not that liquid shit, right? That's like $200 that was so popular last week. It is just this stuff. Um, vital proteins, collagen, peptides. I only do one scoop. Um, if you put two scoops in there, it tastes gross and it really makes it thick. Um, and plus this stuff is expensive. I only need one scoop of it. It's, it's nine grams of protein and that's that's where you're going to increase your protein like pretty easily. So yeah, like a lot of people put that in their coffee. And so, um, so I'll do that. And then I don't always have a protein powder. Um, so cottage cheese with you know, um, bagel or English muffin, um, and some kind of fruit. And then I'm ready for the gym. Right. I'm, and when I go to the gym, I'm like this, right. I'm boom, 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 whatever music's going on. I like everything, you know, it could be hair nation that I'm listening to. I have serious, <laughs> um, hair nation, maybe it's Pitbull radio, you know, it could be like a nineties thing, like whatever. I love it. Right. Hard rock. Um, I like it all so but I am like literally like boom 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 I've got so much energy that's the point right I am whatever carbs I took in is going to get poured into that workout right and so don't be afraid of carbs those that's your energy source and this whole intermittent thing intermittent fasting thing right if I go there with nothing in there then I'm gonna sit there and be like how much longer right Get, get me off of this thing, right? Because I'm doing heavy leg presses, I'm doing squats, deads tomorrow, um, leg extensions, like I got my, tomorrow's leg day, so we're gonna take care of that shit. And then when I get home is when I'm generally going to have, so right now I'm on a, um, it's, it's my standard is always gonna be that non-fat Greek yogurt, um, and then I put in chocolate protein powder, the Quest chocolate with berries, and then I mix that together. You're gonna have to put water into there. I don't make shakes because I don't wanna clean my blender. So. <laughs> so lazy girl, and again, right, I mentioned my lazy girl cooking guide. If you guys are really just, you really need um, protein ideas, but you don't wanna spend your, your day in the kitchen, then check out my lazy girl cooking guide. I'm gonna be taking that off of there um, this week. I'm having my VAs do that because that's gonna be like a freebie that that I want just for my Facebook group which is going to be changing as well so it's the no BS menopause secrets but right now the one the link in there is the best way to get all of the information you guys I give all away my stuff for free right I want you to have the information so um, um oh boy <laughs> a couple comments yeah I did a video on um Anyways, whatever. So, um, 
So I am in the gym for 45 minutes and then I'm outie. Um, I might go on a walk on the treadmill, but so I rest one minute in between sets. Usually I go for a walk. So I go to Planet Fitness and I do like a figure eight. So I'll do one loop, right? And go to my exercise, and do the exercise. And then I have one minute rest and then I go do another loop. <laughs> and then I go the opposite way, right? And so the, everybody there are used to my, my crazy shit by now, you know, so it's all good. But that's just a great way to get steps in as well. So I shoot for anywhere from six to eight K steps a day, but it takes effort for me because mostly right behind me is the um um is my office and so it's uh a lot of sitting you know and doing making content and coming up with ideas and and clients and and, and my coaches and like you know stuff so work um how long with cardio i i don't do cardio at all except for those little walks that i'm doing in between and so yeah 45 minutes I don't think anything good comes after 45 minutes. If you're kicking ass, working hard, you should be working at anywhere from 80% to like, well, it depends on what phase you're in. So I would say like 75% to 90%, only once in a while. Are you gonna push to max, right? But, um, so I would say like right in there, I, um, I, I'm doing three sets of everything. And you know, the lower that your sets, the lower that your reps are, then the heavier the weight is. The higher that your reps are, then you're gonna kind of back off on the weights a little bit. So right now, I think I'm in a rep scheme of like some things are eight to 10 and some things are 10 to 12. So, um, but yeah, after, you know, I put everything that I can into that workout and then I'm, and then I'm done, you know? I go, I go to, to, the, um, to the massage chair. <laughs> So if you go the if you go like to to my name to my profile it's it has my free Facebook group there it's the uh, No BS Menopause Secrets and so that's wide open for now we're going to be changing that to a private group it's always going to be free um, but right now you can you can get in you don't have to answer any questions or anything so um, so yeah if you guys you know if you're like damn I need to talk to her and see what's going on with me right then I'm always available for a call. Um, right here, I do not charge for consultation calls and let's just have a little conversation about what's going on. I, I used to be a member. You're so welcome. I used to be a member of two gyms and then I cut it down to one, but you're really intimidated to lift. So, um, I think you asked too, like how to, how to get started. And that's when you should really enlist a friend or maybe your husband or maybe your, your kid or, you know, whatever. I'm not sure what your what your what what it looks like for you um you know and if you can swing it then hire a trainer to show you around um i get it you know but nobody's looking at you they're too busy looking at themselves and right now it's kind of crowded anyways you know so um you know it's definitely going to be more beneficial for you to get off of the cardio machines and get yourself onto the weight floor to to build that muscle because that is so important and that's why i'm pushing with the protein because the protein is going to help build the muscle which is going to help increase the metabolism which is going to help in your body composition is going to help take down fat and it's going to help increase in it's going to help change your body right it's going to dictate what your body looks like underneath the fat so if we concentrate on fat loss and that's done through calories guys it's not done through cardio i don't have my clients do cardio they don't do cardio right they do steps just like i do some some clients they do 10 to 12,000 steps that's just they're part of their job some are only getting five to six thousand steps everybody's individual Right. And so you kind of you have to work with where you're at. And that's what we do with our coaching is, you know, where are you at? What can we work on first? Right. So I gave you guys a huge strategy on what what, what I do with my one on one clients. Hopefully that this is going to um, record and I'm going to be able to put this up on YouTube because um, this was a good conversation. I should probably cut it short because, well, short. It's been an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. So um, if there's any questions, let me know. Hey, it's really hard to have a conversation with you guys on TikTok. So again, check out, number one, go here and check out what your maintenance calories are. I also have a free five-day challenge that is going to be the five-day menopause meltdown challenge 
check that out. It's five days. It's going to help you with that protein. Um, and then you're going to see for yourself in five days the difference that it's going to make, how you feel, how your appetite is. Hey, Penny. All right, good. <laughs> Instead of PMF day. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. And where are, where are you from, Penny? I'm in Cape Cod, Mass. Yes, you, you just checked and you just got my recipes. It looks delicious. Like, honestly, like it's, it's the lazy, it's called the lazy.